a life sentence is a hundred years, right? A hundred years long or 99 years long. And then the judge sets a minimum tariff of whatever that is. That could be 20 years, that could be five years, depending on the severity of your offense. Right. So the judge warranted that I had to serve a minimum of five years in custody. But when that five years comes to an end, that's then up to the parole board, whether they release me or not. So, but they don't have to. And if they don't, you could technically stay in prison for 99 years or the remainder of your life. So you have to demonstrate you're no longer a risk to the public. So when I was at four years, I had the year left of my tariff before it expired. I'm in a lower security prison. I start doing everything again that's expected of me. Um, and then my life completely changed in 2009. And then when my best mate died or best friend from it being from, from, from childhood, basically, um, died in a car crash, committing a robbery in the Netherlands, I had never experienced emotion like it in my life. And I remember sitting in this cell and, and I realized how one our precious life is and, and my friend's life had just literally gone out like a light and he never had children, he never got married. Um, and I realized how pathetic it was the situation. Like I thought I was winning some sort of war in my head against the system and the state. And, and, and actually I was just basically pissing my life away. It was like someone switched on a tap and my life was literally going down into a drain um, every day, every breath I was taking. I was literally spending my life on earth locked in this tiny little box. And I remember watching the news and they showed CCTV clips of the final moments of, of my mate's life. And he was in some shitty supermarket in the Netherlands, spraying uh, a can of CS spray into the lens of the camera. And it froze, the camera froze. And there was a picture still. And I could see it was him because I could tell by his eyes. And I just remember like looking at that TV screen and I was like, I don't know, it just, it just hit me like, I looked how pathetic it was. Like the situation that, that, that I was in and, and, and it made me look at my own mortality and, and it made me look at my mate that I saw what I, I saw the, where I was at. It, it was pathetic in that context, but how that could have been me and I could have been them, that person, like how lucky and fortunate I was because I could have been shot dead back in 2004 when the police tried to arrest me and my life would have ceased to exist that day in that car park in South East London. And I saw the fact that I was alive as a blessing. Um, and, I, and, and I made a decision that night that I was done. I was done with that life. And, and the following morning, I come out and I went down for breakfast and no one obviously knew what had happened. And I just sat there and I thought, I can't be around these people no more. And, 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 I, and I try to use the analogy sometimes. It's like being addicted to drugs and being locked in a crack den because... I made a decision that night. I didn't want this life no more. And I wanted to do something else in my life. I didn't know what that was, but I didn't want this life. I wanted to get out of this place, get away from these people. Um, but I was trapped. And I was literally physically trapped. Like I couldn't just get up and get out. And then I'd probably meet the most remarkable human that I've ever, ever had the privilege to ever meet in my life. And, and that was the prison officer that <laughs> that that aided me um, to to, to find that belonging and find that sense of worth and direct and change your direction into something and, and put that energy and drive that I still had as a human in something productive and positive.